President Obama continues his visit to the Middle East today. It's his first foreign trip since winning re-election and his first trip to Israel as president. Mr. Obama will deliver a major speech to a large group of students in Jerusalem. He will also visit the West Bank to talk to Palestinian leaders. Yesterday, the president met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in a joint press conference after their private meeting. Mr. Obama addressed the two issues at the top of his agenda. The possible use of chemical weapons in the civil war in Syria and Iran's nuclear program. Assad has lost his legitimacy to lead by attacking the Syrian people with almost every conventional weapon in his arsenal, including Scud missiles. And we have been clear that the use of chemical weapons against the Syrian people would be a serious and tragic mistake. And finally, we continued our close consultation on Iran. We agree that a nuclear-armed Iran would be a threat to the region, a threat to the world, and potentially an existential threat to Israel. And we agree on our goal. We do not have a policy of containment when it comes to a nuclear Iran. Our policy is to prevent Iran from acquiring a nuclear weapon. I will repeat, all options are on the table. We will do what is necessary to prevent Iran from getting the world's worst weapons. Joining us this morning is Steve Chigueras, Executive Washington Editor for CBSNews.com. Steve, good morning. Good morning. So it was quite an interesting press conference, and as expected, they spoke a lot about uh, the civil war in Syria and Iran. What did we hear? Did we hear anything new at all in this press conference? Well, what we heard, well, we were waiting to hear what the president was going to say about Syria, especially with all the talk about chemical weapons uh, potentially being used there. And then uh, following that, a lot of talk on Capitol Hill um, pushing the president to act militarily, perhaps, uh, in reaction to that. And what the president came out and said is we need to find out what the facts are uh, before rushing in uh, to any kind of decision on Syria. Uh, and he made it very clear that uh, they're looking for uh, what really happened there before they move forward on that. So that, that was sort of what the world was waiting to hear uh, from the president. What, what is the, the administration's reaction to uh, the allegations in Syria, in Syria? And then on Iran, I think what you heard uh, was uh, the president and uh, Benjamin Netanyahu getting really on the same page in terms of how to deal with Iran. There were questions uh, that they were not totally on the same page in terms of what they thought the timeline was in terms of uh, Iran uh, being close to having a nuclear weapon. And so you heard them talking uh, and really uh, getting together uh, on that issue. Yeah, I think what struck a lot of people as well about this press conference was just how warm they were with each other. And it really didn't seem like they were faking it for the cameras. They joked around about how good looking their children were because they married good looking wives. Um, in the past, though, they've had a frosty relationship. Uh, everyone knows about that. How important do you think it is for these two to connect, uh, you know, on a personal level, not just in Israel, but in the United States? How important is it to have them working together in this warm way in the United States? Well, that, that was clearly one of the major goals of this trip for the president, was to smooth over that relationship. Uh, as everybody knows, uh, as you mentioned, it was frosty. I think it wasn't helped by the fact that um, the guy that uh, the president ran against last year, Mitt Romney, had a, a better relationship with Netanyahu, it seemed, uh, than uh, the president himself. Uh, but that's all in the past. They're moving forward. And I think in order to uh, basically reset uh, the relationship between President Obama, who hasn't, frankly, had uh, a really you know, close relationship with Israel in his first term, uh, in order to sort of reset that and look ahead to uh, how the president is going to deal with um, maybe possibly brokering peace uh, way down the road between uh, Israelis and Palestinians, this is sort of the first step of, of getting uh, down that road. Yeah, now you bring that up, and we were told uh, even before the uh, president left the country that there were no plans to revive any peace talks. But you can't go to this area of the world without some expectations. Do you think there, there's still, you know, some pressure on the president to at least bring up the topic? Uh, well, this, the topic is going to be brought up, there's no question. I mean, he's meeting with Israelis, he's meeting, meeting with the Palestinians, and they'll talk about that. But to, to think that he was going there to even, you know, have an accord in hand and, 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 and try to broker peace, that was not the point of this trip. I think the president uh, will admit that they're not even that far down the road in terms of the relationship with Israel at this point. And secondly, uh, and they mentioned uh, before that you look at previous presidents that have gone and, and brokered or tried to broker peace, uh, Presidents Carter and Clinton, and the timeline was a little bit different. I mean, they were close, they were further down the road in 
terms of talks than the president uh, is, is sort of walking into at this point. So I don't think there's an expectation that this is going to happen during his trip. All right, Steve Chigaris, executive Washington editor for CBSNews.com. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you.